Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. We're going to be using the 500cc machines with Norik Arbe right here in Donington Park. So on pole position is Alex Crivier, Jeremy McWilliams, Norik Arbe in the front row, Schwantz, Lawson and McCoy in the second, Biagi, Dewan, Rossi, Kaczynski, Roberts Jr., Rainey, and finally at the back of the grid, Wayne Gardner. So without further ado, let's go classic racing once again. So here we are in Donington Park with Arbe on the front row waiting for the lights to go out and they're out. Brilliant start from Arbe, got a good jump off the line but he has accelerated a little bit too much, completely span up the rear. Of course that rear tyre is now looking worse for wear, really hot but what a start from Arbe. He was quick off the line there as we got a little bit too aggressive on the acceleration coming in out of Redgate. Now into turn two for Hollywood, got to hold the line here again sliding that rear a little bit as we flick it left for the Craner curves. Already up by five tenths of a second, actually three tenths of a second as Crivier and McWilliams close in. As Crivier, brilliant move from the Spaniard up on the inside of the Yamaha man. Did not take no for an answer there. He wanted to get straight back, but Arbe brilliantly done. Fights back immediately. Excellently done from Norik Arbe as Crivier will attempt to go around the outside. Don't think that's really a move you can do up into McLean's, but goodness me, he was definitely thinking about it. Onto the right hand side of the tyre now for Coppice. Brilliantly done, going a little bit wide. But that's quite all right. The nature of the rumble strip will bring you around. And that is already a four tenths of a second gap because uh, Jeremy McWilliams has now gone ahead of Alex Crivier, thus stopping the, re the result of getting into a slipstream to Norig Arbe. So magnificent stuff, Arbe. Is that gap is over a second already. Goodness me, ladies and gentlemen. This is on the 120% AI difficulty, of course. Moto 3, Moto 2 haven't been that difficult, but Moto GP definitely, definitely fares a bit of a more challenge than this. But goodness me, already up by one second. Are we going to see Norik Arbe just check out and disappear from the rest of the grid? Going into Goddard for the very first time of asking. We'll be doing that another ten more times, of course, because it's going to be an 11 lap race. But he's seen the rear tyre slipping out on Arbe again as he has a quick look behind his shoulders. I don't think he can believe how far ahead he is already. On the brakes for Redgate, of course, no electronics given on this one. This is real settings. So when I did the MotoGP 20 Classic Championship, I did utilise some sort of electronics. But of course, here, we don't have any. Because these 500cc machines didn't have electronics. So hence the reason why we have nothing. Now onto the right-hand side of the tyre for the old hairpin, turn four. And of course, the right-hand side of that rear is looking a little bit worse for wear already, considering we're only a lap and a half in this one. And basically, that is due to this circuit being a clockwise circuit and just being a little bit too aggressive on the right-hand side of the tyre. With no electronics, it is easy just to pull that trigger a little bit too much, pull the throttle just a little tad, and there you go, you've span up the rear. So keep an eye on that as things progress, because I really don't think we can keep up the same level of pace with, uh, if that rear tyre is degrading so quickly. It's already degraded just by me discussing it, as we get on the left-hand side in a moment's time for the S's. Braking very early there, use a little bit of rear brake if you need to. So now out of the exit of S's, Getting close to the rumble strip there, you can use that to try to bring yourself round. But of course we didn't actually utilise it there. Breaking for the Melbourne hairpin, a difficult corner to get right, so it's going to probably take a couple of laps to really find the lines for this one. Because this is my first time of using Donington Park in MotoGP 21, and of course had to use a classic bike. This such was requested a couple of days ago, I've forgotten who requested it, so I do apologise on that one. But uh, I do believe it was something to do with Virginia. I think that's how you pronounce the name. I'm, I'm so sorry for forgetting. <laughs> I've been recording a lot of videos recently, so it's uh, it's a little bit overwhelming to try and get everything done at once. So I do apologise if I missed you out on that one. So across the line we went. We were up by another second there. A 132.9 for us as Crivier, Lawson, McWilliams, Schwantz, Dewan, Rossi and Gary McCoy all trail behind. Really decent pace we've got already. I, I felt good in the qualifying session just earlier on. But not this good to be leading by three seconds. I couldn't get onto the uh, the second position. I couldn't catch first in the qualifying session. I could not get pole. I really tried. But now in the race, it seems like a completely different story. So the temperature's faring us a little bit better. It's a little bit colder in the qualifying session, so maybe that's why. But of course, we are giving it everything we've got here. I think I did opt for a hard front and a medium rear. Probably should have considered a hard rear as well. But up by... But just a couple of hundredths of a second already on this lap, we could work very well for improving our lap time to a 132.8 ish, something like that. I'm not sure what my potential is for a fast lap here on board this Yamaha, but we'll soon see as these laps progress because I am enjoying this very much. It does feel weird to just be leading a Grand Prix, which is so peaceful, 
So, well, at least as of yet. And, of course, this is still on 120% difficulty, but I do recall when I did the Classic Championship on MotoGP20 with Kevin Schwantz, this was a track that we sort of dominated as well. I, I think it was Wayne Rainey and Schwantz had a bit of a ding-dong, and then that was it. Kevin Schwantz ultimately went out to the lead and just dominated. And that is a 131.2 already for Norik Abe, really churning out those fast lap times. Goodness me, that pace has increased yet again. Crivier, Lawson not really showing anything. Crivier, obviously he had to try. He certainly had to go up into the old hairpin just a couple of laps ago. But this is certainly not going to be enough for that Spaniard to chase down the Japanese man up ahead, Norik Abe. Of course, now onto the left-hand side of the tyre for the very difficult Starkey's Bridge for Turn 5. It is a difficult corner to get the right because you feel like you can carry way more speed in there. But if you carry too much speed, you'll probably lose the front on that little teeny bit of a bump. Coming out of McLean's over the Rumble Strip. I absolutely adore this track, if you can't tell already. One of my favourite tracks of all time, if not my favourite. Well, as we go on the right-hand side, a little bit too much acceleration again there. You've seen the bike just squirming a little bit. But I've got to say... MotoGP 21, the handling is great, and these 500cc machines are beautiful. They handle so good. Much better than last year's game. Last year's game, they were a pain in the arse, to be honest with you, because they just kept wheeling. Every corner you went on, they just wheelied. But here, I'm finding a decent amount of speed, gentle acceleration. Be careful with that throttle, and it seems to be quite all right. So it's a little bit slower this lap. We did make a couple of mistakes there, but it's still going to be quicker than the, the guys behind as we've managed to increase the lead now to just over six and a half seconds. So something I haven't really noticed or utilized much of in the Moto3 class, because I've been doing so much MotoGP 21 career, is the front brake discs. And I'm going to mention this at the optimum time here, because if you look in the bottom right corner of the screen, you will notice that the front brake disc gets extremely hot during this Donington Grand Prix. Of course, the temperature is quite high already, and I've been rather aggressive on the front brake with these 500cc bikes. So you're going to probably make notice to it, not so much in the tighter corners like uh, Old Hairpin. It's going to get warm, but it's not going to get red hot. But for your longer braking distances, such as uh, the S's for Turn 9, and of course Turn 1 for Redgate, you will see the brakes really light up. And I've got to be honest with you, it does feel different. It does feel like I'm struggling to brake as the temperature heats up. So perhaps I should have gone for a different brake disc. But I love that extra feature, that extra sort of difficulty, that extra sort of uh, learning curve for us all to try and get, under, get an understanding of. I love that, because this is a whole new challenge, and it's just going to be absolutely awesome as these things continue. And of course, in there, I tried to brake a little bit more gentle, and we actually did a better job in that corner, and the front brake disc didn't get too hot. So of course, here yeah, I'm still going for maybe a 80% to then eventually 100% braking, which was absolutely way better for Melbourne Hairpin. We're down by three tenths of a second compared to the lap time record that we set earlier. But right now, the consistent pace is what is the good what is good for us. As we got a little bit too wide for Goddard's there, I did fear the worst as we got ever so closer to the grass. As we now cross the line, have a beautiful look at this absolutely gorgeous Yamaha. As we're now up by almost 10 seconds, goodness me. They just aren't managing it. Look at the front brake disc, goodness me. Oh, sliding on the rear as well. Too much acceleration applied to the rear, just absolutely span it up. It's so easy to do on these 500cc machines. It does feel like a whole new challenge, riding these 500cc's, which slide the rear, going into the old hairpin. No style points here, but if there was, I'd be definitely getting an extra boost there. Shame it wasn't like an old arcade racer for doing that extra bit of drift. Surely we should have been given more points and more speed. And of course, here in MotoGP, 500 cc's that does not happen as we completely mess up the line on uh, McLean's there the rear tire just absolutely slidded almost into oblivion but thankfully we kept it going onto the right hand side for coppice and I gotta be honest with you guys I'm a little bit disappointed with the AI in this one I really expected them to put up more of a fight I expected an absolute classic ding dong like we had in the Kevin Schwantz championship for Motor G Motor GP 20 and sadly that has not come to fruition and I really don't see it coming anytime soon. So Alex Crivier, for the very first time, is now trailing by 10 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. A whole heap of time there. 10 and a half seconds. And you know what? I think that's going to go even further. We could have eventually... Have, it's already up to 11 seconds. Goodness me. The AI seem to be lacking a lot in Donington Park. But for the rest of it, they've been pretty competitive. Or, we're just on another level. I'm not sure... Maybe I should focus on that part and be like, look guys, I am just so good. But no, I don't think it is. I think it's just a little bit of an unbalanced part of the uh, of the races so far. 
But that is a 1.31.037, so that is another terrific lap time from Norikabe. So I don't know if you guys knew this already, but many times in Ride 4 career mode, and even a bit in MotoGP with the Moto3 career mode, I do hold back quite a lot from just running away from the pack, because for me, I don't think it's as entertaining. But this time I decided to absolutely go for it. I'm guessing you can probably tell already. But we've had some pretty decent lap time so far. I wish it was a little bit more consistent. I mean, it's close. But I think it could be a little bit more consistent. Actually, I've probably given myself a hard time there. The last couple of laps have all been within around two, three tenths of a second each. So that is pretty fine and dandy. But apart from... Actually, no, I'm completely wrong. Look at six and five. We were a whole second and a half quicker. Goodness me, uh, <laughs> I need to get my glasses checked, and we're already up by a whopping amount on this lap as well. Almost eight tenths of a second, and we go into the S's pretty well there, navigated to perfection, I could say, as we now get closer and closer to the Melbourne hairpin, and breaking gentle and early there for a change, to see what happens, see what difference we get, and you know what? Look at the time gain, we gained a good tenth and a half, just by taking a little bit step extra, extra gentle, because that's what it's all about, being smooth. Now, I said in the year uh, the Breaking Guide tutorial, if you haven't seen the Breaking Guide tutorial, I would highly recommend you go and watch it. It does help massively with the with the braking, especially in tracks such as Portimao and uh, Harath. So keep an eye out for that one if you haven't seen it already. I'd definitely go and watch it if I was you. But for the time being, we're talking about this particular race. And I've got to say, I mentioned in that video about being smooth. It's all about smooth control. The movements have to be smooth, or they have to be... Nothing has to be abrupt or janky. You have to just do it naturally and let it glide. And as you can see with Norik Abe, so far he is doing that. He's being smooth, he's being consistent, and he's not pushing too much. He's not chucking the bike everywhere. And even the rear tyre has begun to sort of calm down a little bit. There's not much tyre life left, but on the acceleration we are being much more gentle. And as you can see, it's resulting in quicker lap times. So I would say always bear that in mind. Go slower, or at least what it might feel slower, and you actually might be going a bit quicker. Random wise words from this doctor here. <laughs> so now going into the S's for the eighth time of asking, and on the left hand side, and then flick it to the right for the part of the S's. Beautiful. Up again by 20 thousandths of a second. Actually, just lost a little bit of time by going a little bit too wide um, before we got to Melbourne hairpin. So now into the hairpin for turn 10. We're on the right hand side of the tyre. We've got to have a smooth acceleration out of here. That is beautiful. No wheelie, just smooth acceleration because. If you haven't used these bikes yet, they do wheelie. Oh, they do wheelie if you put too much throttle on. So be careful with that one if you haven't used them already. I implore you to try them if you haven't used them already. Or even just to add, add some sort of try. As we go over the line now, we're going to improve our lap time by one thousandth of a second. Look at those two laps. A 1.3504 and a 1.3503. Goodness me. You know, I makes myself so proud when I see good consistency. It's something I've always wanted to do, and I never seemed to could do it in the past previous games, like uh, MotoGP 13, 14, and 15. I could eventually for like Valentino Rossi in the game, and then maybe for 17, but I never felt as consistent as I do in the past couple of years. So Ride 4, I was pretty consistent in that, and MotoGP 21, I feel great on MotoGP 21, I really do. I don't think I'm esports level, nowhere near, but at the same time, I feel great. I really love this game, I'm having such a blast. And I appreciate you guys are too, so I want to say a quick thank you to you guys for enjoying the content. Let me know if I'm doing alright, etc. So I appreciate all the feedback and support recently. I do apologise if this race has not been as entertaining as usual. But at the same time, because it's not been so entertaining, I've not had to do much screaming. And my goodness, that is a track limits warning for the very first time. I was actually curious to see how this works. Because of course this track here does not have a long lap penalty enabled. I'm guessing you'll just accrue penalty points as the time goes on. Or unless you get five and you're disqualified. I'm not sure. I haven't tried this out yet. But what I was going to mention is that uh, because obviously the race is a little bit smoother, it's a bit more quieter, as we run it a little bit wide for Goddards, my voice is probably having a little bit of a rest. Because those Moto3 career modes, my goodness, they take it out of me. They really do. They're exhausting sometimes, especially the one in America's. That one didn't stop. So I, I usually, when I'm recording, I'll do as much as I can, have a little bit of a break in between, and then keep going and going and going. And I've got to say, you probably can tell already, I do feel like my voice is crackling a little bit in this one. But, uh, yeah. I did just record the race for Portimao not long ago, so yes, you can sort of understand why the voice is taking such a hit right now. It's because it's been absolutely wild in the Moto3 career mode in MotoGP21. I am absolutely loving it, though. I do feel like I'm giving it all... 
I'm gonna get everything I can, so I really, really, really hope that you enjoy it, and I really do my best, so I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So that, a big shout as well to everyone who joined the live stream a couple of days ago, too. I really appreciate all the support in that one, people uh, sending donations and helping the channel grow. So yeah, absolutely massive thanks to you guys there as well. I do love doing the live stream, so fingers crossed I can do some more in the future. Maybe in a couple of weeks' time I can get another one done. But at the very least, it'll always be at least one live stream per month. And probably do some more online racing or some, or some career mode. Actually, probably not the career mode, because I do like doing the career mode in the recordings. Because I do feel like the production value is better for an actual video rather than live streaming it. But we'll see in the future. And of course, as we progress through the season, I do eventually want to discuss whether we want to go for a different team. Or if we want to just try and wait to go to Moto2. But at the same time, I'm probably going to keep you guys included, or I'm just going to go for the decision and then let you guys sort of watch it as, as it unfolds. I haven't quite decided yet, but we are on to the final lap, and I've got to say that has flown by. Yeah, it really has, and I have had a fantastic Grand Prix so far. Yes, we're up by a whopping ton of 20 seconds, but at the same time, it's been pleasant. It's been nice to just chuck in fast lap times, be consistent, or and just focus straight on the bike and the riding. It's been great. I do wish the AI was a bit more competitive, because a good old-fashioned battle in Donington Park is absolutely awesome. It's what every fan desires to see, and to be honest with you, every fan desires to see a battle anyway. So, yes. But we are up by 85 thousandths of a second, or at least we were down by 85 thousandths of a second, now down by two tenths. So I don't think we're going to really chuck in a lap time that's really going to blow the roof off this place, but at the same time, I think that's pretty impressive for a final lap with the tyres looking as well. As well, I was going to say as well as they are, but of course they're not looking well. They're looking quite ragged. Well on the ragged edge for turn 9 for the left-hand side. Onto the right side for turn 9 as well. And now we go into turn 10. A bit of a wheelie there coming out of the corner. Added style points if you want for the aces. Now onto the right-hand side for the Melbourne hairpin. Really tight line. A little bit too tight there. As you can see, I did actually cut the uh, rumble strip. But thankfully no penalty is given for going on a rumble strip. Now into Goddard's for the final time of asking... A little bit of a slide on the rear. And of course, it is going to be victory for the Japanese rider. Magnificent race for Norikabe. He wins right here on board the Yamaha. So those are your results of the British Grand Prix. Norikabe leads by a country mile. He wins from Alex Crivier and Eddie Lawson. Eddie Lawson looks like he beat the fastest lap. In fact, actually every single rider beat the fastest lap on the last lap of the race by two seconds. What on earth has gone on there? I don't think that's happened. <laughs> so guys, apart from that timing being a little bit wrong, I hope you've enjoyed the race. I really hope uh, you enjoyed my little bit of a chat and this dominant performance from Norik Abe. So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, thank you for watching, and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.